I want to cycle back to the urban wood uh, topic uh, for a moment here. And um, so in the case of the 500s, you're replacing mahogany. Right. Which we've talked about the density of the, uh-huh. of, the, uh, of, of the new wood. And it's obviously a very different wood from mahogany. Very. At the same time, mahogany has been a wood that, to those of us who've been around wood a lot, has been one of those woods that people are saying, well, pretty soon we probably won't be able to have the kind of mahogany that we're used to, right? It's one of the woods that the supply just isn't there anymore. And I would think that that's a factor in in, in the replacement for you guys as well. Um, But I do think there's something interesting about um, sort of the overall carbon footprint of sourcing wood that is in your neighborhood, right. right? We're not putting it on a plane or a ship or something to come from halfway around the world right. with this, which I think goes beyond the obvious, we're not cutting down these trees in terms right. of making an eco-friendly guitar. Well, there's, there's, a couple of, there's a couple of things in there. Yeah. Okay, first I'd talk about mahogany. Yeah. And the good news is that mahogany isn't going away. Okay. okay. Honduran mahogany, as we think of it, yeah. as a species, it actually has a pretty healthy outlook. Okay. It's not always coming from the parts of the world you would expect. Okay. So oftentimes Honduras mahogany isn't coming from Honduras. Right. The trees never really cared very right. much where mankind drew yeah. the right. country borders. <laughs> you know, it's more of a regional thing. Right. So it might come out of Guatemala, it might yep. come out of Belize. Yep. It, you know, it's yep. it's got a region that it wants to grow through. Yep. And mostly it gets managed Okay. Yeah. Right? It's not it's not the big worry. Yeah. One of the huge benefits is that there was a model that was set up more than a century ago mm-hmm. where British colonists went into Fiji and started planting their I'm favorite wood. About this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which was mahogany. Mm-hmm. You know, it's we call it the king of woods because it's the wood you could do anything with. Right. You know, yeah. you're stuck on a desert island. And you have one wood to work with, mahogany. choose mahogany. You're going to build yourself a boat and paddle away. Right. You know? yeah. You're gonna, you can do kind of anything with it. But there are vast troves of this wood planted. And so most of the mahogany that we use that is Honduran mahogany yeah. in name, yeah. it's actually coming out of, it's plantation grown, coming, plantation grown wood coming out of Fiji. Oh, interesting. And so that continues to be part of our kind of our staple diet. Mm-hmm. We're actually using more mahogany on our 300 series guitars mm-hmm. because oh, it's a great wood. I love those flavors. I love the yeah. way it works. I love the way it sounds. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That's great. We've got a wonderful place yeah. for it in amongst the kind of the catalog of, or portfolio right. of guitars. And of course, you're using it on your necks. Right. We're yeah. using a lot of mahogany on necks. Yeah. And so that. That supply is pretty healthy. Mm-hmm. It looks pretty good. That, mm-hmm. that forestry model has been an example for mm-hmm. things that we wanted to do elsewhere. Mm-hmm. It also gave us the kind of the inspiration to start, mm-hmm. right? Because the people who planted those trees, they're not with us anymore. That was right. a long time ago. Right. Except they had the foresight to go, someday this is going to matter to somebody. Right. And that's enough for us to start. Mm-hmm. We should do that. And so that provided some inspiration yeah. to go, well, let's, let's embark on some of these forestry projects, yeah. even if ourselves won't, we ourselves won't ever live long enough yeah. to see the full benefit of it. Yeah. That makes our sense. Our kids, yeah. our grandkids, yeah. our great grandkids yeah. might. And to them, it's going to matter. Yeah. Which is similar to what you're doing with the co op project in Hawaii. Exactly. Yeah. But now, onto the <clears throat> urban wood. Okay, you're right. And that is. And that is a, an interesting return to a much older way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Like if we had been instrument builders alive, call it 300 years ago, yep. you know, the heyday of the violin right. in, in Cremona, yep. you're not going to go halfway around the world to you're find the most You're going to perfect. go in the forest. And- <laughs> you're going to go someplace nearby. Yep. You're going to find what you get. Yep. And you're going to design something that works with that. Right. Just so happened that spruce and maple worked really well for right. instruments. Well, and there was no preconception of what a violin should sound like when right. they started you making. You just want to make materials. a beautiful thing, right. yeah. make a beautiful sound. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's hard to move a log. It's hard to move a log around the world. Right. It takes a lot of effort, and certainly this COVID era pandemic showed us that. Yeah. It is really difficult to get things to travel around the world. Right. And so we went back toward our own backyard, mm-hmm. went, what materials are here? Mm-hmm. 
What do we have to work with? Mm -hmm. Let's design something that works with those unique characteristics mm -hmm. and redefine what we would want out of a guitar. Right. Why not? Yeah. You can make an interesting, beautiful sound with a wood that's perfectly acceptable, yeah. perfectly appropriate yeah. for making songs. Right. That's the goal. Right. You want to make a beautiful, great, pleasing, gratifying sound. Yeah. Is it, at times, that's a similar sound to something else that we've used, a traditional wood, we'll call it? Yeah. Sometimes it's an entirely new sound. Yeah. But in both cases, well, it's wonderful. You're making songs. You're making a great guitar out of it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was uh, telling you before we uh, were here in front of the cameras, years ago I had a conversation with the late uh, classical guitar builder Thomas Humphrey. Right. And I was asking him about, uh, you know, the kind of woods that he gets orders for. And he said, my clients don't care about the woods I use. He said, yeah. they want me to build them a guitar that works for them as a musical instrument. Right. And I thought that was a really interesting way for really one of the finest class guitar builders in the world uh, to have removed himself from this preconception of I have to build every guitar out of, let's say, Brazilian rosewood or <laughs> right, you know, whatever, right. Canadian cedar or something right. like that. Uh, and still deliver the goods in, 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 in a very uh, effective way. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. It working in that way where, you, where the builder has an opportunity to interact with one player right. and build an instrument for them. Right. It's that's very a, different that's from a the different way, experience. Yeah. And I've, I enjoy that right. very much because yeah. you could sit down, watch the way somebody plays, yeah. and go, okay, you do this and not that. Yeah. You play in these yeah. kinds of environments. You're going right. to use it in this way. Yeah. And so I'll steer the design, yeah. I'll steer the wood choice yeah. to your unique kind of playing style. Yeah. Now, in our case, where we're not necessarily working with individual players, although we love doing that when right. we have opportunity yeah. to, oftentimes what we're wanting to do is create an instrument that's broadly useful, yeah. that can fit a lot of different playing styles, right. different approaches to the instrument, different yeah. aesthetics, different, like every all those elements that go into a musical experience. Yeah. Yeah and build that as a yeah. piece. Yeah, yeah. You know? And have a range of flavors available yeah, for those exactly. players. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's very cool. So here's a super fundamental question about the urban wood stuff. How many trees are we talking about in terms of what you're using? Uh, like, like, you know what I'm sort of, are we talking dozens of trees that are being used to build guitars? I think well, just for a lot of people, we don't, we don't really know, like, how many, you know, uh, it doesn't really matter what kind of wood we're using, but, are right. we, you know, are we talking entire parks, or are we talking, Well, it depends. You know? it, a lot of it is practical. Yeah. It, it, it's practical based on how big was the tree, yeah. what part are you taking from it. Right. Because people think of a, you know, in their, in their head, they picture a tree, you know, leaves, roots, right. trunk, all that. And you're working with a company that's already processing the tree to an extent before you see the wood, correct? Right. And what happens is, is uh, the West Coast Arborist guys, they plant, they maintain, yeah. and then eventually remove when needed. Right. So their, their operation is to maintain the health of all the trees that are planted. Right. And once in a while, a tree will get too big yeah. where it becomes a liability. Right. It's a risk. It might fall over in the next yeah. storm onto yeah. a building or a car yeah. or, yeah. God forbid, yeah. a person. Yeah. And so they, they look at that and go, okay, this tree needs to come out yeah. for whatever reason. Maybe it's right. diseased, maybe it's too large, and they'll remove it. Okay, well, if it was a tree that had enough good characteristic to get lumber out of, mm -hmm. that's when we step in mm -hmm. and we start talking about it. Mm -hmm. so this one is a good, the right species. It grew in the right place. Mm -hmm. It grew to the right size, mm -hmm. the right characteristics. That one could potentially become guitar parts. Yeah. So when, when people think of a guitar, oftentimes they'll have the, like this mental picture of, well, there's a tree and you took a guitar out of it. Right. That's not really how, yeah, it, not works really how it works because <laughs> the guitar is made of a lot of different materials. Right. Yeah. You have one, maybe one material for the top of a guitar, different material for the back right. and sides, different material for the neck, yeah. fretboard, et cetera. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, it's this composite of yeah. all of these unique yeah. woods. Yeah. And could you see expanding the use of the urban woods? Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I know on some of the on the American Dream series, you're using some other kind of uh, eucalyptus on the fingerboard and bridge, correct? Right, right. That's yeah. again is a plantation grown wood uh -huh. that is being the color is being changed yeah. from its natural state by yeah. a very old process using uh -huh. ammonia fuming. Uh -huh. Is much the same as what uh, Gustav Stickley would do with furniture yeah. you know, 100 years ago, yeah. where you can create a tannic acid reaction within this piece of wood yeah. for a short amount of time. Yeah. You only have a little window to do it yeah. in when the wood's got a certain amount of moisture in it, but yeah. you can create this color change that's throughout the piece. It's not like a stain or a dye or something. Right. And so we're, we're using that on fret, certain fretboards yeah. and bridges because yeah. the material sounds great, works great, yeah. wears well. It's a really unique option to use for some guitars. Awesome. And so to more directly yeah. answer your question of how many guitars yeah. you would take out of a tree, it's never a straightforward It's never answer. straightforward, obviously, yeah. Because you're not going to remove a guitar from a tree. Right. You can yeah. take boards right. that you might cut backs and yeah. sides out of yeah. eventually. Yeah. You might take fret boards. Right out of a different type of wood. You might be able to take boards that you would then resaw a few tops right. out of. Yeah. Sometimes a tree will be very efficient. Yeah. It'll have a pretty high yield yeah. and you'll get hundreds of guitar parts right. out of the saw log, you know, the main trunk from right. kind of just above the roots to just below the first main branches. Yeah. You might get hundreds of guitar parts out yeah. of that. Yeah. You might get a handful. Right. And that's why targeting the correct trees is really important because the work goes up tremendously if it wasn't a very a very appropriate tree to use. Right. Some trees you look at it and you go, well, it's a big tree, but that one's standing mulch. Right. There's no guitar right. part inside right. that tree. It's just right. leaves and bark is all that's really to, there. To the wood chipper it goes. Right, yeah. it's a, we, we call them standing mulch because <laughs> right. that's what it's useful yeah. for. Yeah. Other trees, you look at this one piece and go, well, that thing is amazing. I'm yeah. going to get all this wonderful material out of it yeah. once you open it up. Yeah. You never really know, but you get a pretty good sense of what's going to happen. Awesome. So maybe to wrap this up, we've seen the wood in the finished guitars. Right. Uh, and you're doing a little bit of staining on there um, as well. Uh, but uh, you have some of the actual boards, um, yeah, these the are, sets, before they, they get turned into back and sides. Right. These are some side sets. Yeah. These ones... This one's not quite guitar quality. It was kind of that one little pin branch right. was that in the would wrong. Probably crack if you if you bend yeah, it. Yeah, it's the yeah. wrong place at the wrong time. Essentially, right. you know, nice hmm. sap. Well, that would make a nice center, though. <laughs> sure, it's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty yeah. But yeah, okay. this here's this is what what uh, the red iron bark can look okay. like in the raw. This one yeah. has a tiny bit of figure, a little bit of bees wing. Yeah, you know, it's remarkably dense. Yeah. It's like you can feel how smooth the texture is, but uh -huh. how unbelievably hard this stuff is. Right. Yeah, you can It's and, and that's why it was so beguiling yeah. to to start working with yeah. because it has the characteristics yeah. of something like a rosewood. Right. Right? It feels almost like that, but with an even finer, smoother yeah. texture. Yeah. And is this about the thickness you would use for the sides? Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is, uh -huh. you know, maybe a few thousandths thinner than I would use yeah. for something like uh, like mahogany. Right. I was going to say, because right. to me, this looks fairly thin from both Yeah, from, this is whatever. similar yeah. to what I would do for another dense, hard rosewood. Okay. Wood. So uh -huh. typically, typically, you'll make something like that just a hair thinner. Okay because of its weight and its right. density. So that is an interesting aspect also to the guitar construction that some oh, yeah. people may not be aware of is how the different kind of woods are treated differently in their thicknessing. Right. Um, uh, imagine you do some tweaks on the bracing on the different guitars. And very models, much so. Very much so. Very much Which so. kind of brings us back to what we were talking about earlier, how much control do you have over the sound of the guitar? It's right. not a matter of taking this new wood going through the same process you would with other kind of wood right. putting the guitar together. See, I, yeah. I think, again, yeah. I think of it like cooking mm -hmm. because you've got these different ingredients. You're going to do different things to them right. based on the uniqueness of that material. Mm -hmm. So like this piece, the way that it gets cut initially, yeah. the way that it gets dried, yeah. the way it's seasoned, yeah. how it's acclimated yeah. and brought up to the temperature yeah. and humidity level right. that you want to build the guitar from. Right, and that's something that's we do a, here, correct? We do all of that here yeah. because we need to be in control of that part of the recipe right. to know that what we build from it will also be 
course. Yeah. Will fall where yeah. we want it to right. fall. It's got to work, right. and it's got to be a reliably good right. guitar. And you mentioned earlier, I mean, we're seeing the guitars now, but you've been experimenting with this for what sounds like several years. Yeah, like this wood is, uh, it was probably five or six years ago now okay. that I started working with it yeah. and learning about it. Yeah. And, you know, you get some, you work with it, you learn what you learn, make some observations, right. try it. Yeah. You get some more to yeah. see if it was an anomaly, you know, right. you try it over and over. Because obviously at the numbers that you guys build guitars, you need to have a supply that works of these. Products. Right, yeah. right. So yeah. you have to know, well, can I get it? Can I work with it? Right. How is it best worked with? Yeah. And then we'll go through the process of developing something that's uniquely suited for those characteristics. Exactly. Right? Yeah. In the same way that I wouldn't build a, a guitar design and say, well, that's a, a mahogany guitar. Right. And then, okay, take the mahogany off, put rosewood on. Yeah. Well, that doesn't work. Right. It's, and yet that's been the approach for a long time for some manufacturers. Well, yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. easy. Yeah. It's easy. Well, you've got already parts on the shelf. Just swap the materials right. out and do something different yeah. with it. Sometimes it works. Sometimes you get lucky. But oftentimes it's... It might work, but it's not going to work well. Right. Right. There is a yeah. difference between working and working right. really well. <laughs> and so yeah. I look at this material and go, well, this is good, yeah. but because this other thing has this other set of characteristics, I'd want to tweak this bracing architecture a little yeah. bit, make it a little thicker, make yeah. it a little thinner, yeah. or you know, finish it differently. Yeah. There's all these different things to optimize yeah. what one wood and what one material will do for the voicing of a guitar. Yeah. Like here's another example. Okay. This is an urban wood. We don't use this yet. Okay. This one I'm still working with. Okay. What's Beautiful this one? smell. This one's camphor. Okay. It has this incredible aroma. Okay. Well, since you mentioned it, I'm going to have to try right. that out. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, it's an amazing material. Yeah. Wonder, it's a very strong smell when it's freshly cut and of over course, time. We all smell guitars. Right? When you go to a guitar shop, you <laughs> yeah, always, it's like you, you pick that thing like, up. Oh, it's like, especially when you get like a nice cedar or something right. like that. Right. <laughs> it's, it's a thing. It's, 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 a got, thing. it's one of the unique yeah, pleasures sure of guitar thing, making. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, man, this that's is a so beautiful. Yeah, uh, sometimes it has some figure. Yeah, that wow. one came because there was a branch over here, okay. this compression figure. This one, I'm not ready to work with this yet. I've been playing with it for quite some time. Compare that weight, even though this oh, piece is... Oh, I could already tell immediately, yeah. Twice the thickness. Absolutely, and it's probably lighter than these boards, yeah. Yeah. Completely Incredible. different set of characteristics. Yeah. yeah. I've got to do something totally yeah. different with this. Could almost be like a top wood, it's so light, maybe. <laughs> yeah, almost. It doesn't have quite the, you quite be the, the judge stiffness. Of that, not me. <laughs> that <I'm>, <laughs> yeah. So all, all right. these things, there, there are all these interesting ingredients to go, yeah. well, this is what we have to work with. Right. Amazing. Yeah. Let's make something that sounds great. Yeah, that's awesome. Great. Well, it's been so much fun chatting about these uh, urban wood options and digging a little bit deeper into that and um, looking forward to demoing more of the guitars and just looking forward to seeing where else this, this goes because I think it's a really exciting thing on so many different levels. There is it the is. obvious sort of it's... Uh, it's the thing to do from a sort of eco-wood perspective, but I think also just in, in bringing guitar construction and, and everything forward in that way and thinking locally a little bit more, mm -hmm. it's just a really exciting thing. Yeah, so, uh, it is exciting. Very awesome. I mean, the thing that makes us want to drive forward as guitar makers yeah. is musical creativity. Yeah. Right? That's what I, That's I, I love to make these fresh voices. I love to yeah. make new sounds. Yeah. I love to make something that pulls my own playing a little farther forward. Right. And, and provide an option for a musician looking for something. Yeah. Well, how exciting is that to play a new song? Yeah. It's something that you haven't done. Yeah. Well, it's a new flavor. Yeah. This is, it's like the sky's the limit. So there's no awesome. limit to what we can continue doing. Great. Thank you, Andy. Hey, it's my pleasure. All right.